Let's translate John chapter 5, verse 24. Amin, amin, lego imin, oti oton logon mu, akuon, ke pistevon to pemsanti me echi zoin eonion, ke is krisen uk erchete, ala metabebiken ektu thanatu istin zoin. So, amen, amen, I say to you that the one who hears my word emphasis is on word here the one who hears my word and believes in who the one who sent me that would be the father in this context believes in the one who sent me has eternal life we're not going to translate it eternal it's everlasting life and literally and into judgment not it he comes so the one who hears and believes is not coming into judgment but instead has passed passed on from death into life all right, so we have amen, amen, truly, truly, I say to you that, what are we saying? The one who hears the word of me and believes in the one we'll put this over here because it's dative who sent me now although this is accusative this is the object of this verb here so i'm going to keep it down here as opposed to up here the one who believes and hears has, I'm gonna put it over here. So both of these go into this, has life everlasting. And I'm gonna put it over here just so you can see judgment. So the verb is actually right here, right there. Oh, I'm gonna put this right there. All right, so we've got has eternal life and is not. So the one who hears and believes is not coming into judgment. But a little bit of contrast here. Still over here, though. Has passed from death. To life passed from death to life this is our direct object here this is not okay so truly truly I say to you that the one who hears and the one who believes has eternal life the one who hears hears my word so this is Jesus speaking here's Jesus's word this is his message and believes believes who believes Jesus no this says believes in the one who sent me which is the father which is God which is Yahweh so the one who hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has life eternal or everlasting life and is not coming into judgment but has passed from death to life. Let's take a look at Amin here. It's a strong affirmation of what is stated. It is the transliteration of Hebrew, Amen, or Amin. So as a strong affirmation of what is stated, let it be so, truly, 
Amen. It's a liturgical formula at the end of a lit liturgy, which is not what we have here. Or it could be an assertive particle, truly, always, with Lego. Ah, this matches what we have here. I assure you that. I solemnly tell you. This seems to be much more like what we have. And it strengthens a preceding statement. Amen, amen. Amin, amin. Repetition, em emphasis. So this is what we're dealing with right here. Assertive particle. Always with Lego. That's in fact what we have. And it intensifies and emphasizes uh, from what precedes it. What precedes it. Verse 23. In order that everyone might honor the son, just as also uh, they honor the father. The one who does not honor the son does not honor the father, the one who sent him. So we're continuing on with that idea of being sent, Jesus being sent. To believe in Jesus is to believe in the one who sent him, the father. Lego, Lego my ego, usually it means I speak, I say, to express oneself orally or in written form, to express oneself in a specific way. And here, it's an assure, assert, di direct discourse following, especially in the formulas Lego C, Lego Amin, um, Amin Amin, Lego Amin. That's what we have here. So this is an assertion. OT. Now we have the substantive participial usage here. O Akuon, the one who hears. Akuo means here, here as a passive respondent to Lego, literally to have or exercise the faculty of hearing, followed by a thing as object in the accusative. So that's what we have here, the accusative tone logon. Logos, it can mean word, a communication whereby the mind finds expression. Since the divine word is brought to humanity through Christ, his word can be used in the same sense. My word. So the word of God is simply the Christian message, the gospel. And so when Jesus says that, it's the equivalent. So the one who hears the gospel, my word, and believes. You know, belief, pistevo here, is trust. It's not simply just faith. It's belief. It's trust. Also, if Jesus and God, whom one believes in that one, accepts their disclosures without doubt or contradiction. Jesus, God. So this is with the person to whom one gives credence or whom one believes in the dative. So you believe, here's our dative, Pemsanti, the one who sent. This is Pempo. You know, like pimp to send, Pempo. I'm not saying that there's a correlation between that. That's just my mnemonic device. So Pempo means to dispatch someone, whether human or transcendent being, usually for purposes of communication. To dispatch something through an intermediary, send. So what we have here is likely the use of this first one here. One who sent me has life. Now has is third singular present active indicative. Echo, echo, to possess or contain, have, own, to stand in a close relationship to someone, have, have as. This is like relatives. To take a hold on something. So this is to have it in one's hand. Can mean to have on or wear. That's clearly not what we have here. Be in a position to do something, can, be able, that's not it. To have an opinion about something, consider, look upon, view, with accusative as object and predicate to experience something. This could be the case as connective marker to have or include in itself. There are various combinations with it, with prepositions such as en, tuto, echis, that's not what we have here. To be in some state or condition active intransitive and personally it is 
This isn't impersonal, though. Personal, be, in a certain way. How they have means how they are. To be closely associated with. Mm. I think number seven has some merit here. To experience something, have, experiences eternal life. This is used of all conditions of body and soul, of illness, generic conditions, characteristics, capabilities, emotions, inner possession, to have love, knowledge, zeal, jealousy, faith, gifts, spiritual gifts, gratitude. be used of advantages, benefits, or comforts that one enjoys. To have been granted the requests. To have rest. Favor. Honor. I think, I think number seven here makes sense, but I'm not convinced that that's it. Although it does align with elsewhere. I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. In the present tense. Have it now. But I think this is this is instead speaking of having life everlasting and it qualifies it. You possess this. You possess it now. And because you possess it now, you have passed on from death into that life. This is an already but not yet scenario. You already have this. Everlasting life does not start when you die. That's why echi is in the present tense. Third singular present active indicative. And is not coming into judgment. Here you can see its opposite life, Zoe, life eternal, and into Judgment not, he is coming. Erchome, of movement from one point to another with focus on approach from the narrator's perspective, come, to proceed on a course with destination in view, go, to change place or position with implication of being brought, to be brought, we could translate this, and is not being brought into judgment. take place, come. That doesn't make sense. Erkome in various prepositional combinations. We don't have one here. So, you could say uh, brought be, and is, is not being brought. We still have to translate it as present, but it's middle. So, it can have that sense of passive. It's somewhere in between the active and the and the passive as a middle. I'm just going to translate it as um, and is not coming into judgment. But I do believe some translations say brought here. If I'm not mistaken, the NRSV does. No, the... NRSV says, and does not come under judgment. But, now now we have a perfect, third singular perfect active indicative, metabino, metabeno, there we go. To transfer from one place to another, go, pass over, to change from one state or condition to another state, to pass, pass on, this is uh, an extension of meaning one. And you can see here, John 5, 24, Pass from death to life, or move from death into life. Ease, extension involving a goal or place. Into, in, toward, to. Extension toward in the direction of a specific place to be reached. With focus on the area within the point reached. Of movement directed at the surface of an area on, in. Of a position within a certain area. Of presence in an area determined by other objects of direction towards something without reference to bodily motion. Verbs of looking, verbs of saying, teaching, proclaiming, preaching, baptism, 
I don't know what this word is. Nipteste. It's not time. It's not degree. Marker of goals involving effective, abstract, suitability aspects. Could be abstract. State of being. Going, coming, leading. This could really fit right here. Of change from one state to to another with verbs of changing. Yeah, now we're hitting close to home. Although they don't really give any additional glosses here. Although turn away, they have passed away from death, moved on from death to life. Moved away to life. Moved on to life. This makes the most sense, I think, right there. With the result of an action or condition indicated into, to, so that. I think this could be it as well. The result of passing on from death is life. Uh, I don't really see the sense of, of result here. I think this one's a bit more of a stretch. Same with purpose. It's not marking reference. It's not guarantee. It's also not a distributive marker. It's, it doesn't appear to be replacing the predicate nominative or the predicate accusative. Not instrumentality. And then we have death versus life. We've talked about this before. Thanatos, the termination of physical life, meaning death, or death viewed transcendently in contrast to a living relationship with God. Death, this is the extension of meaning one, and it's used of spiritual death to which one is subject unless one lives out the power of God's grace, standing opposite of Zoe. Life versus death. Now, Zoe is living, substance, property, without which there would not be life. Life in the physical sense. Transcendent life. And you can see three times it's cited here. Especially in Johannine usage, the term Zoe is copiously employed as a rule to designate the result of faith in Christ. In most cases, it is stated expressly that the follower of Jesus possesses life even in this world. So 524a. And then we have an example right here. To have passed from death into life. Also down here. Anastasis, Zoes, Eonios, it seems is reserved to, uh, or resurrected to everlasting life, but a resurrection which corresponds to the Christian's possession of life here and now, a resurrection proceeding from life. John is fond of calling this life Zoe Aeonios, as in many passages just cited, including 524. So, to translate it, Truly, truly, I say to you that the one who hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has everlasting life and is not coming into judgment but he has passed on from death into life. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button. Otherwise, brush up on Greek and Hebrew. We'll see you next time.